I want to talk about um, Francis Kelsey, because on this program, we have had many occasions, not so much uh, recently, although it happens occasionally, to hear from libertarians who, who call in and tell us about the, the wonders of the market and how we don't need an EPA or an FDA. These organizations just stand in the way of progress. Government is an obstacle. The free market will take care of it. And I say, but what about companies that put out products that are bad, that hurt people? And well, we've heard time and time again, over and over again, that's bad for their business. So eventually the market will take care of it. The sedative was Kevadon. And it was applied for approval from the FDA in the fall of 1960. The drug had already been sold to pregnant women in Europe to deal with morning sickness. It had been, and that was basically what we call sort of an off-label use. It had been sold originally as a sleep aid. The application seemed routine, according to the New York Times, and ready for a rubber stamp. But there was a new worker at the FDA who had just taken over the department that reviewed and uh, either approved or rejected requests to license new drugs. The manufacturer was the William S. Merrill Company of Cincinnati. The drug in this country was also known not just as Kevadon, the sedative, but as thamaldehyde. And f Dr. Frances Oldham Kelsey, she was a former family doctor, a teacher in South Dakota, had just taken this job in the FDA because her husband had just gotten another job in uh, Washington. She asked Merrill for more information. Merrill responded, and Kelsey wanted more. And then Merrill complained to Kelsey's bosses, calling her a petty bureaucrat. And this went on for about a year. And more and more evidence was gathering that th uh, thaldamide was causing thousands of horrible birth defects in Europe. And by this point, Merrill had already given out free samples to doctors in this country to try out. This is 1960, folks. This is before there was all this marketing savvy by the drug companies, but the dynamic remains the same. By 1962, the FDA had set up a branch to test and regulate new drugs, and Kelsey was put in charge of it. Later, she became the director of the agency's uh, agents. Office of Scientific Investigations. Since 1957, at this point, the company had made glowing claims about Kevadon's safety and effectiveness. It had been developed in West Germany, widely sold in Europe, as a sedative. It supposedly gave you quick sleep without a hangover. And in Europe, doctors had recently been prescribing it, uh, like I said, for morning sickness. Laws governing new drugs had been on the books for decades, but they weren't um, rigorously enforced. Approval was often routine. But Kelsey had found these, uh, the evidence for the safety to be mm, a little thin. Merrill, however, was pressuring her because it had tons of Kevin on in warehouses ready for marketing. And like I said, a thousand American doctors had already been given samples for investigational research. The company supplied more data, but also mounted a 
concerted campaign to pressure Kelsey. Letters, calls, visits from Merrill executives ensued. She was called fussy, stubborn, unreasonable. All words you can hear about the bureaucrats of today. Standing in the way of progress. In 1961, she read a letter in the British uh, Medical Journal from a doctor who suggested that thalidomide might be causing a numbing condition in arms and legs. She notified Merrill. The company began its own inquiry. In May, she told Merrill that the drug might affect the limbs of fetuses. The company called the evidence inconclusive. Six months later, now late 61, European reports indicated that the drug was linked to an epidemic of phocomelia, a rare but uh, malformation Horrible uh, malformation of limbs in newborns. Kevin uh, samples given to American doctors were traced, but not all were retrieved. 17 births of babies with deformities were reported in the United States, according to the FDA. Eventually, researchers learned that thalidomide crossed the placental barrier in retarded development of the fetus whose drug metabolizing enzymes are undeveloped. No one knows how many uh, babies were affected by thalidomide, but estimates range into the tens of thousands in Europe alone. Many were born without arms or legs, some with no limbs or with withered appendages protruding directly from the trunk. Some had no external ears or deformities or eyes or the esophagus or intestinal tracts. But I guess the market would have ultimately taken care of that. So, right. So she uh, passed away at uh, the age of 101 about a week ago now. And the story should not just be about Kelsey, the bureaucrat. The story is about the bureaucracy. The story is about the need for government regulation. The inability for a profit-making entity to fight its only reason for existence when that ex reason for existence is challenged by the safety or the health of consumers and, environmental, and the environment and workers. That's just the bottom line. I know I, I mispronounced the litamide. I can never get it right. But uh, let that be a, just one lesson of history for our young libertarian friends.